Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will cover JSON threat protection in RPG. So what do I mean by that? Basically, I want to verify the incoming JSON payloads uh, before passing it into the backend to get a response. Um, so by doing that, I want to uh, protect against the bad request in JSON format. And without further ado, let's now get started. All right, so before getting into how to protect against the bad JSON input. So first, just take a look at this Swagger UI. So now let me just scroll down. I am going to look for the post request. So there's a few of this. And I want to try for this one, the order. So let's now just try this one. And you can see that in the body, it's supposed to be like this. So uh, we have six objects here. And when I scroll down, I can click on the execute. And right here, you can see that we have the uh, body with this uh, response. And the successful operation, it also show here as well. This means that it is successful with the 200 status code. All right, so back to this one, the body. Now we have six objects. Let's say I want to try adding another one. So this time, um, I'll just say test with this as true, then see if we get the response from this or not. Now let me just click on the execute. And right here, you can see that we still get the success response. And I don't actually want this to pass to the back end. So what I'm going to do, I want to limit this to only six objects that are allowed to pass in this uh, JSON only. So now let's just uh, go back to the RPG and I want to now try to save this as a new revision. Okay, so now it's saved to revision 5. I want to deploy this into the test environment. All right, so now it's deployed. I uh, just want to make sure that it's actually working. Now let's just go back and I start a new thread session. So with this, I want to copy this as well. And right here, I open this in the uh, Postman with this uh, URL with the post request here as well. So I paste it here. I don't want the front part. So starting from here and make sure that it's not the inventory. This time it is the uh, order. Okay, so now we have this. And when I click on the send button, I'm pretty sure that we get the error message because um, in the last uh, tutorial, I show you how to implement the or how to protect using the OAuth 2.0. So now um, I just want to quickly grab this link right here and then here is this is our access token and I want to go back here and also I just want to mention that if you're not sure what to get again just watch my previous tutorial on how to uh, protect the API using the OAuth 2.0 then you would be able to get the access token. Now let me just come back here and in the uh, header okay so here in the uh, headers, I want to hide the auto generated uh, headers. So just hide that. And right here, I want to add the authorization. Uh, it's right here. And then the value, uh, it starts with the bearer and just paste the access token right here. Okay. So now let me just click on the send button again to see if we get the response. And right here, we can see that we get another error message saying that it's uh, the 4.15 or 4.5, it's unknown. So the reason is that we have to also put the uh, content type. So content type application slash JSON. All right. So just put this one right here. And now let's try it again press on the send button. 
and here we can see that we get the response but the thing is that it say again this one is type error so what does this mean it means that we have to also provide the body which is uh, we can see inside this um, example right here so now let me just paste it here and here we have the ID pad ID and um, there are six of this um, now, now let's just uh, click on the send button again okay so finally we can see that we get a 200 status code it is successful so this is what we enter let me just try to change this say from uh, one quantity to 10 all right so here we still see that we get the success response so that's um, the step on how to make it work uh, we just require to have the authorization uh, the content type but one thing is that we haven't actually implement or try to apply the policy which is the json thread protection policy okay so now let's just come back here and we can also see that this is what we trace so far now let me just try to stop this and going back to the developed okay so here uh, remember that we have this so far with the uh, pre-flow with these two policy now let's just scroll down and try to look for the order which is right here place order and just click on this plus uh, step icon and now look for the JSON thread protection okay all right so let me change this name stand for JSON thread protection and then click on the add button and now we have this uh, edit and here you can see that this is come with the uh, default uh, value we have the display name uh, property array element count container def object uh, entry count uh, object entry name length source and the uh, string value length okay so uh, now what I want to limit is the object entry count uh, right here it says 15 so now let me just limit this to only six uh, if you still remember we have uh, six of this that are allowed okay so now I just change this to six actually these are not required but um, I just want to mention that again uh, just try to quickly explain you so if you want to limit the uh, array element count by default now it's a uh, 20 if you want to limit to say 15 or 8 or something then you would be able to do that as again the same as this one if you want to restrict the uh, container def uh, to the uh, say a specific value or specific number then you will be able to do it here and uh, this is for the one that I'm going to do and right here this is the object element name length so now uh, say we have this uh, more than uh, 10 character I believe then if you want to limit this only to say around 10 or 5 then you can also do that as well but make sure that uh, this one accept the uh, short uh, version of this and uh, right here this is the source and string value length uh, which is uh, 500 right here so now let me just try to uh, just keep it as is for now just change this to 6 and click on the save button all right revision file save now let's just come back again and click on this post button you can see that we still get the success response but this time I want to try and add another one which is if you still remember which is test true or it can be anything actually say zero and a comma here but now let's just see and here as expected we get the uh, execution fail reason is that it exceed the object which is we only allow six but now we have seven so that basically how we uh, protect the bad input inside the JSON so uh, that how it is now let me just try to again let me remove all of this because this is not required I only want to have this one and click on the save button again see if we get the uh, success response still okay let's just come back and try to uh, press this 
and we expect the error again yep that's correct now let me just remove this and see again and yep that's the success response 200 so that's uh, how we try to protect this uh, using with the uh, post request uh, in this case I'm using the uh, order right here and um, I just want to also try to close this again and click on sale and going back I want to see if this is still working okay it's still working I try and add another one example test so this is the object with the 7 you can see that we still be able to do that if without applying this uh, policy uh, sometimes this is fine because um, we can only get this uh, response but if sometime if we enter this name the same like say we have like something like this um, then that going to be an issue so it is very important to have this implemented okay let me just do that again Click on the step JSON thread protection let's see this is the uh, existing one that we have already created edit this one and right here still six save going back and click on the send button we expect to see the error as seen remove all of this again with these two should be fine at the moment yep that's pretty much how we try to apply the uh, JSON threat protections policy and this is how we try to also limit this object it can be the string length can be the object uh, name length as well and there's a lot more as I show you earlier and if you have any question let me know I hope you like this video as well and see you guys in the next video